Library of Babel. Jonathan Basile's website really captivated my attention and uh, I, as an engineer, wanted to know how this program or web uh, website of his actually works. So I, uh, I decided to implement my own Library of Babel after playing around with Jonathan's website and found some interesting things in writing my own application, which I will now talk about here. Okay, the central part of the form here is the text, which you can freely enter yourself and then press the search button up here and it will find the location in the library of that text, no matter what it is you type in. If it's only a partial page, the program automatically taps the whole page, the rest of the page out with spaces. So every page that's searched for is complete, all 80 characters wide and 40 columns long, being 3,200 characters. Down the left side here, you have the, uh, you have the, at the top, you have the uh, wall number, and the bookcase number, then the book number, and then lastly the page number. And they're just list boxes, you can select those yourself if you want to browse to any page you like. And at the top is the hexagon address, which is a, a text box. You can enter your own uh, address for whatever hexagon you wish. I'll just type in something here and then we browse to it, and not surprisingly we just see junk. What I did though want to do was be able to do the reverse of this project uh, process where you uh, can say save this junk somewhere and now go back into my program again and now enter in that junk that it previously was browsed to and now do a search and finally go back to the original address. This, this part of the process is not quite straightforward using it character set of 29 characters. I'll explain this a little bit more in detail. Essentially the 29 characters can't be represented as a, a nice number of bits for a computer. It's, um, it can be represented by a, a 5 bit number but not all the bits are actually used. The values of 0 to 28 representing 29 characters uh, won't uh, won't fill the uh, the full value of five bits. For that, you need a 32 character character set, and that's what my program actually uses. I've added three extra characters to the character set, so that we have a full five bits being used. The reason why it's important to have all the bits used is when the scrambling process takes place we end up with just an array of scrambled bytes which uh, then gets turned into an address. But then if you go the other way from an address back into text, the, the descrambled bytes need to be turned back into characters. By having all the bits used we find all the characters in our character set become available. So we have a one to one correspondence between address and text page and text page back to address no matter what the text is whether it's whether it's um, intelligible text or just total rubbish okay showing you some of the code this uh, this part of the code is the search because there are really only two functions you can search for text or you can browse from an address and get a text page and they're, they're reciprocal functions. They're, um, one is basically the opposite to the other. So here we see the search basically getting a, uh, all the text out of the text page and turning it into this uh, array of, um, of numbers. And to do that it's got to pack each 5-bit number into an array of bytes which are 8 bits. Now fortunately 5 bits you can have 8 characters 8 by 5 is 40 so you have 8 characters will compress into 5 bytes so we have our entire 3200 character page compressed into a nice 
byte array of 2000 bytes. This is also quite useful because uh, 2000 is divisible by 16 and the scrambling process scrambles 16 bytes at a time. So this works out quite conveniently. So once we have this array of these compacted characters, we then scramble it using uh, this encryption algorithm. And uh, once we've scrambled it, we then have another array, same size, 2000 bytes, and then we have to basically make a, uh, an integer number out of all of this. And uh, if you think of the 2000 byte array, bytes are values from, two, uh, from 0 to 255. So a 2000 byte array is like a 2000 digit number where all the digits have values 0 to 255, so it's a very, very large number. In any case, we, we end up with an extremely large decimal number using the big integer class from the C-sharp, which handles arbitrarily large integers, which is very handy for this application. So once we have our very large integer, we can then just divide off to get the, um, to get the page number and do a modulo of 410, and then we can divide off and get um, uh, the, um, the book number, which is number 0 to 31. Then just do modulo 31. Then we do the same sort of thing for the shelf number. And then lastly, the, uh, the bookcase number. And then what remains after that is interpreted as the hexagon address, which is then just converted to the base 36 uh, as it's representative of the letters A to Z and 0 to 9. So that's the search process. So, one could ask, now that you know how all this works, one could ask what this program could be used for. Other people have asked how much information is stored in such a library like this. Well, the answer to that question is probably not surprising. It's actually zero. There is no information kept in the library at all. It's got all combinations of just randomness, and uh, really there is there is no information at all. For for every bit of something you might find that's intelligible, you have unbelievable amount of just total gibberish. And when you think of every combination of anything, sooner or later you'll find common sense popping up somewhere along the line. In any case, it's an interesting little toy to play with, and it does indeed do what it claims. You can type in some text, and it will find an address of where that text lives, and it will always be in the one place. You can come back and put that address in, and it'll go back to the text you originally typed. So that's, uh, that's just the way it, mathematics works. Anyway, as far as uses are concerned, there is, there is one use you could, you could use it for, and that is sending secret messages. Um, you could just type in your secret message and find the address and then send that address to somebody uh, and then they have the program at the other end and put the address in and uh, and voila, do a, uh, a browse and there's the secret message. And you could say email the hex address because that's fairly large, a hexagon address and um, uh, SMS the, the other details, you know, the wall, the wall number, the bookcase number that is, um, shelf number, book number and page number because that's uh, relatively short, uh, that's relatively short number to uh, amount of information to send as an SMS. But another nice method which I'll show you here is say, say we'll, um, we've got some sample searches that I've pre-programmed in just for, for interest's sake. One of them is uh, the first page of the Bible for example. We click on here and it shows the first complete page of the of the Bible and where it lives in the library. Supposing we wanted to send that as a secret message, uh, instead of sending the address, what we could do is look at the hexagon um, uh, address up the top here and find a convenient place in the, uh, say in the top line here, and look along and see the, all the different characters. We could pick out, say, four characters here and replace them with Z, 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 Z. Then we browse to that particular location and uh, we see it's total rubbish. And then we can email the rubbish to someone 
and um, SMS them the the four characters that we replaced with Zs. So we just they just have four characters emailed to them, and they know in advance to look in the hexadron the hexagon address they they have here from the searched rubbish page, and they see the four Zs and replace them with the four characters that were sent to them as an SMS and do a browse to that page and here we go press browse and there we go we have our original page back so the the information we actually emailed to them is not an encrypted form of the original secret message at all it's a complete bogus uh, just junk no no supercomputer in the universe could ever figure out what the original message was uh, they need to know the vital bits of information the, the four characters and and what to do with them um, in the hexagon address and they'd also need my uh, my program to know the method of encryption and decryption because there are keys cryptographic keys involved in that process so the keys are already pre-programmed in, into my uh, my application uh, which could actually be changed, producing completely different libraries if one wanted. Anyway, I, um, I can make this program available to people if they want to install it on their own PC and try it out. It would be provided as a link, the installer would provide as a link to my uh, Google Drive, so you can feel pretty, pretty confident that it's a safe application with no Trojans or malware or other nasties. Um, in any case, make some comments, see what you think, and uh, I hope it's answered a lot of people's questions. Thank you for watching this video.